Okay, so uh, today we're going to look at the operation of the jury system. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the role of the jury, the impaneling process, or how the jury is selected, uh, and we're going to look at when people are liable for jury service. So firstly, uh, the role of the jury, essentially it's a trial by peers. Uh, it's a trial by peers where people who, in, in essence, are equal to you, are selected randomly to sit on a jury to decide the case. Uh, they're an independent decision maker, so they're independent of both of the parties. Uh, they're independent of the state as well. Uh, they're the decider of the facts of the case. So they decide the facts of the case uh, in criminal, whether the person's guilty or innocent, or in civil, where the person uh, they find for either, the, either of the parties. Uh, so the jury is required to listen to all the evidence in the case. Uh, they're required to apply the points of law as the judge explains them uh, to them. They need to put aside any prejudices or preconceived ideas they have about uh, the parties. Uh, they need to take part in deliberations with the other jury members uh, to come to a decision. Uh, and ultimately, they, they make a decision on the facts of the case. So they decide in criminal uh, whether the person's guilty or innocent, uh, in civil uh, which party should be uh, found uh, liable. In a criminal case, uh, the jury, they need to come up with a unanimous uh, decision where possible, uh, so all the jury members need to agree on the verdict. Uh, they can decide that the person is either guilty of the offence, uh, guilty of a lesser offence, uh, or they can find not guilty. In a civil case, again, the jury needs to try to make a unanimous decision uh, where possible. Uh, they decide on the balance of probability, so which party uh, is more likely to have truth on their side. Uh, they find fine for the plaintiff or the defendant. Uh, they decide on the remedy uh, and they decide on the amount of damages that they're going to award uh, in most civil cases. Uh, in terms of the selection of juries, uh, there's a process uh, that we go through to select juries. Uh, firstly, uh, the juries commissioner, who's in charge of juries uh, in Victoria, they notify the electoral commissioner, so the person in charge of the electoral role, uh, of the number of people that they require for jury service. Uh, and then the electoral commissioner will randomly select uh, the required number of jurors uh, from the electoral roll, uh, and then the juries commissioner will send a questionnaire to all those pers prospective jurors. Uh, people are required to answer that questionnaire and, and send it back within a, a certain time period, uh, and from there uh, the juries commissioner will determine whether uh, the jurors are either ineligible, disqualified, or excused for good reason, in which case uh, they're not summoned uh, for jury service, they're not required, and we'll go through each of those in a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, however, if they are determined to be eligible, uh, then the, uh, they are summoned uh, to attend jury service, so they need to go into court uh, on the uh, date that they're told. Uh, they're put into the jury pool, which is just the pool of all the prospective jurors. Uh, then they're allocated to the courtrooms, and if they're required, uh, then they, they go on to the jury. If they get rejected, then they re return back to the jury pool uh, and could be allocated to later cases. Okay, so in terms of uh, liability for jury service, uh, based on the answers uh, to the questionnaire that the juries commissioner sends out to prospective uh, jurors, uh, they decide whether a person is either liable for jury service and they have to, uh, have to attend court, uh, or whether they're disqualified, uh, ineligible, or excused for good reason. Uh, a person can be disqualified uh, from jury service uh, because of something they did in their past. So, uh, for example, either because of a criminal record, uh, then you're not allowed to serve on a jury, uh, or if you declared bankrupt, then again, uh, you're not allowed to serve on a jury. Uh, you're ineligible for jury service uh, because of either your occupation uh, or if you're unable to comprehend the task. So certain uh, occupations are not allowed to uh, serve on the jury. Uh, so members of the legal profession, so lawyers and judges, aren't allowed to uh, do jury service because they would be considered to be too, inf inf too influential on the uh, other jury members. Uh, if you have poor English and unable to understand uh, what's being said in the courtroom, uh, if you are visually impaired and unable to uh, see the evidence, uh, if you're deaf, uh, or intellectually disabled, then you'd be ineligible for jury service. Uh, you can be excused uh, if you have a good reason uh, from jury service, uh, such as 
uh, if you're ill, if you have a serious illness, uh, if you're incapacitated in some way, uh, or if you live uh, a certain distance from court. So in terms of uh, Melbourne court cases, if you live over uh, 50 kilometres away from court, then you're excused uh, from attending jury service. Uh, or if you happen to uh, care for dependents, uh, or if you're advanced age again, uh, you'd be excused from, for jury service. Uh, in terms of impanelling the jury, when you're selecting a jury in a civil case, uh, there's an optional jury of six. Uh, either party uh, has to choose uh, whether to have a jury, so either party can select to have a jury present. Uh, two extra jurors are selected for long trials. Uh, if they think that the case is going to be particularly complex and lengthy, they can select extra jurors. Uh, if eight jurors remain at the end of the trial, then a ballot determines which uh, jurors are excluded from deliberation. So only six jurors uh, take part in the final deliberations. Uh, they do this just to ensure that uh, the case doesn't get uh, abandoned if we lose uh, jurors through illness uh, or death. Uh, the trial can continue with as few as five jurors. Uh, if it drops below five, then uh, the case needs to be retried. Uh, in a criminal case, uh, there's a compulsory jury of 12, uh, so there has to be a jury uh, for all criminal cases and the state uh, pays for the jury. There can be five extra jurors selected uh, for long trials, again, if they think it's going to be a particularly lengthy or complex uh, trial. It can continue with as few as 10 jurors. Again, if um, some, a juror becomes sick and is un unable to continue, or even if they die, then uh, the jury can continue with 10. If it drops below 10, then uh, the case needs to be retried again. Uh, when they select the jury, the jury uh, will elect uh, one of the jurors to act as a foreperson or to act as a spokesperson for the jury. Uh, their role really is to uh, ask the judge any questions that the jury may have uh, about the case or about uh, points of law. Uh, they conduct the deliberations of the jury, make sure that uh, all members have a chance to say uh, their opinion, everyone is listening. Uh, they will deliver the verdict uh, to uh, the court, whether the person is guilty or innocent in a criminal case, or if they find for either the plaintiff uh, or the defendant and the amount of damages that they're awarding in a civil case. Uh, their vote uh, carries no extra weight uh, in the jury, uh, and not, their role isn't to try to influence the jurors uh, either way. They're merely there just to conduct deliberations than to act as a spokesperson for the jury.